Hi everybody, it's Colleen here. Um, I know that not everybody likes the Hierophant card and I know that many people have an aversion to it because um, it's often portrayed as a as a religious dogma card um, but there's so much more to it than that and I thought of a little story today which I can perhaps tell you that um, will help you to see this card um, in another way so I'm going to give it a bash <laughs> tell me what you think it was uh, inspired by an account that I follow on Instagram um, a travel journalist if you if you can call him that um and uh, yeah it, it it's come from that so uh, <laughs> hopefully it's going to work so he was recently in uh, Ethiopia <clears throat> and he joined a tribe as as he does um his account is, is fantastic I'll put the the details in the description um and he joined this tribe for a few days and he lives with them and he you know he does things with them he learns from them he um you know he records videos of what he's doing and um and that's how he brings those adventures and sights and scenes to the world but as he was taking part in something it made me think of the hierophant and i thought i'm going to tell the story and hopefully change your view of the hierophant so i'm going to switch to another screen um because i am going to show i'm going to i want you to see the hierophant as i'm talking i have picked um a couple of different decks to show you different decks that portray it in different ways obviously this one is your um, standard rider weight and that's the one that people tend not to like too much because it seems like it's a religious card um just a quick note I, this isn't a deep dive into the hierophant card but the reason it's drawn like that is because pamela coleman smith drew on the cultures and religions of the present day um when she was alive to illustrate her points and in this particular way um the church was a a go-to for you know teachings about life uh, in general and that's why it's kind of drawn this way anyway let's go back to our little tribe in Ethiopia so <clears throat> the travel journalist uh, his name is Mike um, he joined this tribe in Ethiopia and he took part in a coming of age ceremony obviously not for him <laughs> but for the young lads of the tribe. Um, so if you just picture this, if you picture um, a remote African tribe, they live out in the wilderness, they live with the land, they know the seasons, they know the plants, they know the animals, they hunt animals for food, um, you know, they drink natural water, they know what plants they can eat, they know what plants are medicine, blah, blah, blah. That information is passed down via word of mouth. Okay, so all the elders of the tribe will pass that information down to the younger people. Now, don't get me wrong, I will be talking about men and boys today. Obviously, the process in the tribe for the girls is slightly different because they do have a stereotypical life there. The boys go out and hunt and the girls stay home and bake bread and pick berries and, and do girly stuff. Um, that's not always how it works in real life. So just, you know, we need some poetic license here. So now what's going to happen is you have a bunch of little kids and those little kids are at a stage now where they are able to understand why things are done the way that they are done. They understand the consequences of their actions or are about to be taught it. And it has come time for them to progress from being a child or being a boy to being a man. They will get taken out by the men. And so the, the, the men of the tribe, the, you know, the elder brothers, the cousins, the uncles, the, the fathers and the grandfathers. And they will go out on this massive coming of age ceremony where the young lads will be expected to perform or take part in some sort of ritual. Um, I didn't actually see what the ritual was in the video that I was watching online. But let's just say they all have to take part in some sort of a hunt. And instead of being bystanders for the first time, they would have to actually uh, ensnare and kill and skin and do whatever they do to animals when they catch them so that they can eat them. They will have to actually do that by themselves because they're no longer boys. They are now men. 
And when they get shown what it is that they need to do, they go back to the little campsite, they will sit in a circle, yada, yada. And they all get given a little tattoo, which is done uh, with an acacia thorn, incredibly. Um, an acacia tree, they have the most phenomenal thorns. And they get a little, a little tattoo, and that tattoo marks them as now officially being a man. Now, if you think about that in the context of the Hierophant, it's really fascinating because that's really deeply what the Hierophant is about. It's the passing on of knowledge through generations. It's, I know it's often referred to as, you know, as a teaching card or religious dogma or, you know, a society convention. And you can see how this can tie in with our little tribe in Africa. You will always have elders, and it will be the same for the girls. The girls in this little tribe will be going through exactly the same type of ceremony, but on a on a different level. They might not be hunting, you know, the local gazelle. They might be having to make some sort of a, a you know medicinal remedy um, that will be used, you know, to show that they can prove that they know what they're doing. So. It's like everybody go that all the all the children go from that childlike position of standing by and watching the elders do all these things. They're absorbing all that information, but they're never actually taking part. And it's only at some point where they have this ritual and this ceremony, which is also what the Hierophant is about, is 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 they ha they go from being children to being adults. They get taught all sorts of things the that you know the men in the tribe will teach them how to hunt, how to kill the animal, how to give thanks to the animal as anyone living in that sort of environment does, how to you know skin the animal, how to use this for this, how to use this for this, and how to use the whole animal. Perhaps there's elders in the tribe that will teach the children um which is the best moon phase for. I don't know, hunting a specific animal or picking a certain type of plant or contacting your ancestors. The women in the tribe will teach the children how to make medicinal remedies, how to cook, how to clean, how to make clothes, etc., etc. It's all information that is passed down through ritual and through ceremony. Growing up, as I did in a Catholic household, the, the flip side of, uh, you know, growing up in a tribe in Ethiopia, as I was brought up Catholic, I was taught, you know, I, I, I went to a, a convent, I attended catechism, I attended church, I attended mass at school. Um, we were, you know, we were given all those things that had been fed down through the generations. And we went through rituals and traditions, you know, I had my first Holy Communion. Um, you know, um, I wasn't um, uh, confirmed, um, but, you know, people in the Catholic tradition go through a ritual of being confirmed when you are confirmed in your faith. And it's all rituals and ceremonies that we assign to show that we have taken on certain roles and we're at certain levels of knowledge. And that's why this little tribe in Ethiopia really made me think of the Hierophant card, because that's exactly what's happening here. Here you have, you know, the youngsters sitting here while the elders in the tribe share their knowledge and they teach the youngsters so that the youngsters can grow up using that knowledge and they in turn can can teach the younger ones. And that's why I love this kind of ladder thing happening here on the Lightseer's deck. It's like a continuous process as you as you teach others, as you go up the ladder, increasing your knowledge, you teach others further down the ladder so that they can all go up the ladder. Here you have in the Everyday Enchantment card, you have all these symbols of different religions in the background. And I believe really it's trying to tell us that this isn't a specific religious card. It's just that we often get our, 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 our knowledge and our rituals and traditions through something spiritual. So it's not so much a religion card as it is a spiritual card. You can see here with the spacious tarot, very, very spiritual card with these standing stones. You know, people did that as a ritual, as some sort of ceremony. Here it's wisdom. You know, he's got the book. It's a book of knowledge that he's taking out to other people that he's sharing with. And the same with this card from the tarot every day, or everyday tarot, sorry. Yes, it's it's portrayed as a Bible, but here again, it's because it's harking back to that original point about um 
in in the old days <laughs> the church was the source of spiritual knowledge it was the source of where you'd go to for advice where you'd go to for learning okay it isn't so much like that anymore so things have changed but that's why you see cards like this so when you see that little hierophant card let's just put me back um so when you see that little hierophant card i want you to think about this so don't think about oh no it's this it's this christian bishop and uh, you know i'm not religious and therefore i can't relate to this card just see if you have that right away at smith deck see that christian bishop as a as a symbolic representation of an elder an elder in a tribe, an elder in a family, an elder in a in a tribe, <laughs> okay? And think about how all those elders in all those tribes share their knowledge with those youngsters and how the youngsters go through various rituals, initiations, and ceremonies to progress as they learn those different um, those different levels of knowledge, just as we how we go through different grades at school you know and go on to college and university it's just it's just progressing our knowledge so i hope that that helps a little bit um take away from that kind of religious dogma um bad rap that the uh Hierophant card often has and i hope that it's um it's helped you to see that there's is it is actually a lot of a lot of goodness in the Hierophant card. There's a lot of a lot of knowledge, a lot of sharing, a lot of wanting others who don't have as much knowledge as you do to progress and gain that knowledge whilst you yourself learn more and progress up your journey. And that's why also the Hierophant is kind of teacher and student in the in the same in the same vein. So I hope that helps and if it does please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future goodies. Super duper, I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye bye.